you have done a lot of work with this molecule, uh, Roger. Mm -hmm. This is vortioxetine. And vortioxetine has several features. It's a, a little bit of serotonin uptake inhibitor. It's a little bit of serotonin 1A agonist. It downregulates this receptor. These two pharmacologic actions boost the level of serotonin. And then that level of serotonin enters prefrontal cortex. Mm -hmm. And there, under usual circumstances, it hits serotonin 3 receptors yeah. on GABA interneurons, effectively inhibited, inhibiting glutamatergic signaling. Over 97% of serotonin 3 receptors in the prefrontal cortex are on GABA interneurons. You block serotonin 3 receptor. You decrease inhibition and increase glutamate signaling. Some of those glutamate fibers feed back to brainstem and increase dopamine, which helps with anhedonia, but also increase acetylcholine and histamine, which may have to do with alertness, wakefulness, and cognition. So you have done translation, Roger. Tell us, what does it translate? It seems that it helps with emotional blunting. What else does it help with? Yeah, that's right. And, and I think the key point is we start off by saying that SSRIs are generally not that effective in anhedonia, but we, we can also say is that that may not be the case for other classes of medications. And, and vortioxetine um, has been shown to significantly reduce anhedonia uh, in adults living with major depressive disorder. And the improvement that we see coming back in, in this area uh, among other things, provide the impetus, as you know, Vlad, for us to look at vortioxetine in people living with long COVID or post-acute sequelae of COVID or post-COVID. By the way, this is breaking news. This has not hit the paper, what you're describing. That's right. No. This is just, this is the world's first study like this, that, where we did a randomized double-blind placebo-controlled study in people who were not experiencing major depression but had post-COVID condition, and they have brain fog, and because vortioxetine is also a COX-1, COX-2 inhibitor, similar to indomethacin, it also in fact shifts the microglia from the bad guy to the good guy, the so-called M2 anti-inflammatory. Mm -hmm. We thought this would be a logical drug to test. And what we found was, and I'll keep it short, that when we look at people and we measure their cognition compared to placebo, and we enter into the analysis, the inflammation, those with higher and lower inflammation, those with post-COVID condition actually showed a significant improvement in their cognitive functions as moderated by the inflammation. So we think that there's actually interesting transdiagnostic uh, opportunity here. It was the first time we were able to, be able to show a signal in treating the brain fog. So it may, may help, it, uh, to summarize what you shared, may help with emotional blunting, may help with anhedonia, and evidence that uh, it helps with cognition, even in face of elevated inflammation. 